Hey guys, uh, welcome back to Curling Chronicles. We are here with Dean Gemmel, the CEO of USA Curling. So, uh, Mr. Gemmel, how are you feeling about the competition so far? Well, it's been great. Our, um, you know, it's nice to be here in Switzerland. It's a good curling community here. Um, that's always great. And then we've had uh, our team is off playing very well. Um, we've had, I think we're through the tough part of the schedule. Um, still have some tough games, of course. Every game is tough here, but um, good split yesterday with Italy and Canada. So those are Italy's number one in the world. I think I think Brad Gushu is number two or three. So. Yeah, all in all, it's been, been good so far. I haven't seen much besides the meeting room, but uh, it's been fun when I've been here. <laughs> okay, so where is your hometown and where are you originally from? So I, I, was, I was actually born in Canada. I was born in North Vancouver, and I grew up in Niagara Falls, Ontario. And then I went to school in Montreal. Uh, and I actually played in the 1988 uh, Labatt Briar. That's the Canadian championship when I was 20. And then when I was 21, I moved to New York and uh, started working. And uh, I've been in the United States since 91 and became a citizen in 2000. And uh, so I've lived in the United States more than half my life and raised kids here and everything else and also represented the U.S. at a, at a world championship. So I feel 100 percent American, let's put it that way. OK, so how long have you been curling and how old were you when you started? Yeah, good question. So I grew up in a family of curlers. My, my parents were were competitive players and also active like my dad was a club president usually at every club he was at um, so I grew up around the curling club and then when I was I uh, 13 14 my NHL dream died so I walked across the street to the curling club which is essentially what you can do in Canada but my parents were active so I really started playing more seriously at 14 um, and then played really seriously 14 to 21 uh, and then not something I would recommend to people who are trying to advance in the sport, but I took about 15 years where I was just playing maybe once or twice a year. Uh, and then in 2006, my work career, everything changed enough that I could come back. And I, so I played pretty hard from 06 to 16, 2016. So yeah, so grand total, I guess I've been curling since I was, let's say 14, some might say 10, but 14 is probably more realistic. Okay, so um, what are you looking forward to in the men's world uh, in Switzerland? What do you think of the teams to beat um, for Team USA? Yeah, well, I mean, the reality is every team here is really good. It's, it's. I mean, I, I played in this event once 12 years ago, and it's vastly different um, in that the international teams, the teams from other countries are so much better now. Um, every country has one good team, right, who is here. So, um, you know, I, I, I think our team playing as well as they have so you know obviously you want to see them finish on top of the podium if not on top on the podium but I think when you look at the teams we always look at it like okay what's the top half of the field um, what are the six teams in the top half of the field and we want to like try to split with those teams because it's you know it's just difficult nobody's going to run through all those teams maybe somebody will but not many and then and then we want to win the games of the teams that we think are slightly below us in the field so I feel like the guys are playing great. Um, John seems confident, so hoping for good things. So, uh, people know that you're the USA, uh, the CEO of USA Curling, but how did you take on being CEO? Yeah, so when I, I played competitive, I played seriously until 2016. That was my last nationals. And then I stepped back, and then I had an opportunity to join USA Curling as the director of curling development in 2021. Uh, so I did that, um, and then there was some, there was a change with my predecessor. Let's put it that way, and they appointed me as the interim CEO um, in November of 22, and then they took the interim tag off last May 23. So that's how I landed in this job. But I, you know, it's a perfect job for me because my background is my career was really in communications, worked at ad agencies. And, um, and I was a freelance writer, so that's been helpful. And then I know the sport pretty well. So those two things doesn't mean I don't have tons to learn about other parts of it, but uh, I joke that it may be the only job I'm fully qualified for, so. Okay, so as CEO of USA Curling, what are your top goals and initiatives for the next five years? Yeah, so that's a great question and a few big ones. Um, so obviously we want to grow our sport at, at the recreational participant level. Um, and that's gonna mean, that means expanding our facility footprint, getting more facilities built, 
Um, I wish we right now are in a position to fund that, but we're not. And, and But what we will do, we can help people get to those facilities. I know you guys are at a relatively new curl, a relatively new facility, and you curl on skating ice. Yeah. We want the people who are curling on skating ice to be curling in curling specific facilities. That'll help a lot. It's also a sport, as you know, it's not, you can't go in your driveway and curl, right? You can yes. throw a baseball, you can, you know, play street hockey, whatever. But um, so uh, that's a big one. Um, continue, so with that, continue to expand participation, increase our not the number of people who curl, um, and then uh, achieve high achieve on the uh, international level. So as an NGB of the USOPC, a part of our mandate is to win medals at events like this one and at the Olympic Games, and uh, and that that takes resources and time and committed athletes. So working on all those things. So. What do you think it's oh, wait, last thing I should say too is I definitely one of my priorities is to get curling on US television, whether it's a network or a streaming service, uh, more regularly. We, we call it our flame to flame strategy. We wanna we wanna get attention for curling in between the Olympic Games and not just that big bump during the Olympics. Well, what do you speaking of, what do you think it takes for curling to become a mainstream sport yeah. uh, that people and kids uh, would know about and love to play? Yeah, so the two things. One, we need people need access. So the more facilities we can get built, uh, that's going to help. And then I think television exposure will make all the difference. And there are a number of ways we're trying to approach that, whether it's bringing more events, uh, some of the Grand Slam events, things like that, the United States getting that on television, um, developing other ways to get our sport on television. Because I, I do believe that when people see it, uh, they watch it and then they want to play it, right? So I think that's, you know, that's big for us. Now, can you recommend a favorite restaurant from your hometown? <laughs> from my hometown? I don't know. I don't want to be too mean to my hometown, but I, I don't remember a lot of famous restaurants. But <laughs> let me think. It's been a while since I lived there. Uh, let me think. Um, I don't know. Even I can try to remember where I ate as a kid, but probably uh, uh, I'll, I'll go with the Queen's House Tavern. How's that? That's the best I got. I don't even know if it's still open, but... Sounds good. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. I really yeah. appreciate it. Appreciate both of you guys for all you're doing for to help grow the sport and appreciate your commitment to it, too. This is, uh, you know, we need kids and athletes who are committed to, to getting better. So good luck with everything. Thank you so much. All thank right. You. Thank you.